Hello everyone. I hope everyone's having a good day today. Today we're going to be reading Mittens by Claire Tlay Newberry. Mittens. Once there was a little boy named Richard who loved cats and kittens. He talked to all the cats he met on the streets and every day he said to his mother, Mother, I want a kitten. Why can't I have a kitten? Because you're too little, Richard, his mother would answer. When you are older, you may have one. So Richard had to wait, but he kept on asking, just the same. And every day he grew older and bigger. One Saturday, he went with his mother to the farmer's market to buy a chicken for Sunday. And there, in a booth, along with butter and eggs and cottage cheese, was the cutest kitten he had ever seen. It was a fat tabby kitten in a chicken wire cage. And when he saw Richard, he opened his little pink mouth and said, Mother, said Richard, tugging at her sleeve, look. Richard's mother looked at the kitten, and the kitten looked back at her. Mew, he said again. Then he got up and rubbed his head against the side of the cage and began to purr. Goodness, what a loud purr for such a small kitten, said Richard's mother, and she reached a finger through the wire and petted his nose. Mother, begged Richard, I want that kitten, please, mother. Now, Richard, said his mother and he just knew what was coming next. Mother, listen, he urged. I'm almost six years old, and I wear size seven suits. Surely I'm big enough now, please, mother? Well, I don't know, said his mother uncertainly. He's only 25 cents, said the farm woman behind the counter. And see, she added, pointing to his feet, he's got mitten paws. Mitten paws, said Richard. What are they? He has six toes on each front paw instead of only five explained the woman, and they make a, they make his paws look like mittens. And indeed, they did look exactly like mittens. Little fur mittens. That settled it for Richard. Just think, mother, he said earnestly. He's even got mitten paws. We've just got to have him. Well, all right then, said his mother, weakening. And she paid the woman a quarter out of her purse. Hooray, hooray, hooray! cried Richard, jumping up and down. Thank you, mother, thank you. So the farm woman put the kitten in her bag in a paper bag, with just his head and front paws sticking out. She handed him to Richard, who held him very carefully in both hands, like a bag of hot popcorn. I know what to name him, mother, said Richard, as they walked to the car. I just now thought of it. Mittens. When they got home, Mittens had some more milk in a jar top, because that was the only thing small enough for him. When he lapped it all up with his little pink tongue, he gave himself a thorough washing. After that, he climbed up into an armchair and went to sleep. Next morning, Richard was awakened by a purr, 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 purr from the foot of his bed. There was Mittens, purring away like anything and kneading his mitten paws up and down on the blankets, the way kittens do when they are friendly. Hi, Mittens, said Richard, rolling out of bed. He began to dress in a hurry as to have time to play a while before breakfast. But Mittens couldn't wait. He began to play a little game of his own that he had just thought up. He hid under the bed and pretended he wasn't there. Then suddenly, he pounced out and... and grabbed one of Richard's bare feet. Ow, said Richard. Mittens, stop it, let go. But Mittens just held on tightly with his front feet and kicked hard with his hind ones. He was pretending Richard's foot was an enemy he was being very fierce with. And then all at once he stopped kicking and began to lick Richard's toes to show that he was only playing and he hadn't meant to hurt. One afternoon, Aunt Evie came to call on Richard's mother. She brought Noreen along with her. Noreen was, the kind, was kind of a baby that was just big enough to toddle around and grab things. When she saw Mitten, she squealed, Kitty, Kitty, and picked him up by the tail and squeezed him. So, of course, he scratched her. Ow! shrieked Noreen, dropping mittens and running to her mother. Precious lamb! cried Aunt Evie, and she kissed the scratched arm to make it well, and said that she thought kittens were dangerous for children. Richard's mother said she thought children were more dangerous for kittens. Then Aunt Evie and Noreen went home. Come on out, mittens, called Richard, looking under the sofa. Noreen has gone home, and nobody will pull your tail now. But Mittens was not under the sofa. Maybe he went upstairs, said Richard's mother. So he ran up to see, but Mittens wasn't upstairs either. They looked under the beds and in the closed closet, 
and behind doors and even in the gas oven and the ice box because you never know about kittens. But they couldn't find mittens anywhere. At last, Richard's mother said, darling, I'm afraid your kitten has gotten out. The delivery boy may, may have let him out when he brought groceries in. Put your coat on and we'll look around outside. So they looked around outside and they called, here, mitty, 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 here, mitty, 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 until their throats hurt. But they couldn't find him anywhere. Richard's mother asked all the neighbors, have you seen a little gray tabby kitten about so big? And all the neighbors said, no, we haven't, but we certainly will let you know if we do. When Richard's father came home to din for dinner, there was no one to meet him at the front door. Richard was crying in the living room, and his mother was wandering around in the basement, peering into all the dark corners and calling, Here, Mitty, Mitty, Mitty. For heaven's sakes, said his father. What's all this about? Oh, Daddy, sobbed Richard. I've lost my kitten. Lost your kitten, said his father. Lost mittens? How did that happen? Just then, his mother came up from the basement with cobwebs in her hair, and she told him all about it. Something must be done about this, said Richard's father. And he strode across the room to the telephone. He called up the daily newspaper and told them to print it in tomorrow's paper that Mittens was lost. After that, they all felt better, and Richard stopped crying. And he and his father helped get dinner ready, because his mother had been so busy hunting for Mittens that she had not even started to peel the potatoes. The next morning, the newspaper had printed just what Richard's father had told him to. It was in the lost and found part of the paper, and this is what it said. Lost, black and gray tabby kitten, child's pet, reward. And after that came Richard's address and telephone number. How soon do you think they will bring mittens back, Daddy? Asked Richard as they sat at the breakfast table. I don't know, son, said his father as he started off to work. It might be any minute now. So Richard sat down near the front door to wait. And pretty soon the doorbell went, bring. Richard shouted, Mother! And the door flung open. There stood a boy with a cat in his arms, but it was not Mittens. Oh my no! It was a big old yellow tomcat with raggedy ears and a mean look in his eyes. Hello, kid, grinned the boy. Here's your cat. I found him. How about that reward? But that cat's not Mittens, exclaimed Richard. No, indeed. That's not Mittens, said his mother coming to the door. Mittens was a very tiny kitten. But gee, lady, said the boy, this is a swell cat. He fights dogs. Maybe your mittens grew. Are you sure this ain't him? Quite sure, said Richard's mother. So the boy said, okay, lady, and ran down the steps. Oh, mother, said Richard. I thought that would be mittens. I'm sorry, darling, said his mother, but don't cry. It's still very early in the morning. Perhaps there will be another answer to our advertisement. Just then the phone went, zing and she hurried to answer it a lady at the other end of town wanted to know if richard's mother would like to buy some white persian kittens with blue eyes and long pedigrees richard's mother didn't so the lady hung up and then the door went Brr, again this time it was an old lady with a large lumpy shopping bag under her arm good morning little boy she greeted richard sweetly i have a surprise for you i found your lost pussycat and she reached into her bag and pulled out a little scared black kitten. Oh dear, that isn't Mittens either, said Richard. Oh no, that isn't our cat, said his mother. Ours was a gray tabby kitten. Well, that's a shame, said the old lady. But why don't you let the little chap keep this one? She's a lovely kitten. No, thank you, said Richard's mother. I think we'll just wait and see if our own kitten doesn't turn up. So the lady put the black kitten back into her shopping bag and went down the street. They had hardly got the door closed when the telephone rang again. This time, it was a man who had Dutch hounds for sale, and he was quite cross with Richard's mother for not wanting to buy any. And still, there was no mittens. Again, the doorbell rang. Two little girls stood on the porch. One of them held a sad-eyed mother cat in her arms, and the other had a market basket of very new kittens. Is this the cat your little boy lost? asked the child with the mother cat. No, indeed it's not, said Richard's mother in a very tired voice. Oh, that's all right, said the little girl cheerfully. Our mother said to tell you you are perfectly welcome to all of these cats, because we don't need them. That's very kind of your mother, I'm sure, said Richard's mother firmly, but we don't need them either. So the two little girls took their cats and went down the street. All day long, people kept coming to the door with cats. Richard had not known before that there were so many cats in the whole world. 
There were little cats, big cats, fat cats, and thin cats. There were black cats, white cats, red cats, yellow cats, gray cats, and brown cats. And if there were any such thing as green, purple, or sky blue cats, there would certainly have been some of them too. But not one of them was mittens. Cats that weren't mittens. All day, all day long, Richard thought about little mittens, lost out in the great world and maybe cold and hungry and chased by dogs. By dinner time, that night he was so sad he could hardly finish his custard. Never mind, darling, said his mother. If mittens doesn't turn up by tomorrow, we'll get you a new kitten. But mother, said Richard miserably, I don't want a new kitten. I just want mittens. And a tear slid off the end of his nose and splashed onto his last bite of custard. And then the doorbell rang. It was their neighbor, Mr. Tum Mr. Timmons, across the street. Has the boy found his cat yet? asked Mr. Timmons. No, not yet, Mr. Timmons, said Richard's father. Well, there's somebody's cat up in my tree, said Mr. Timmons, and it sounds like a kitten. Better come over and have a look. So they all rushed across the street to Mr. Timmons' house, and Mr. Timmons took them out into the backyard to his tree. It's too dark to see the cat, I'm afraid, said Mr. Timmons, but you can certainly hear it. Mew, 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 came down from above them. Somebody's cat was up in the tree, mewing as if it would never stop. But Mr. Timmons was right. It was too dark to see it. Some dog must have chased it up there, said Mr. Timmons, and now it doesn't know how to get down. Kitty, 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 everybody called invitingly, but the cat in the tree only mewed louder. Oh, Daddy, what are we going to do? wailed Richard, hopping around frantically. I guess we'll have to get a ladder, said his father. I have one in the basement, said Mr. Timmons, and he went down and got it. They leaned the ladder against the tree, and Richard's father started to climb up it. Do be careful, Dick, and don't fall, warned Richard's mother. Do be careful, Daddy, and don't drop the kitten, warned Richard. All right, all right, said his father, and he climbed slowly upward to the dark branches until Richard could see only his legs. Kitty, 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 coaxed Richard's father, reaching cautiously around in the thick leaves. Got him, he shouted suddenly, and ouch, you little dickens. In another, in another minute, he was on the ground again with a mewing, struggling scrap of fur in his hand. They looked at it eagerly under the porch light and... Mittens! shouted Richard joyfully. Oh, Daddy, it really is Mittens at last! He held the kitten tenderly against his cheek and Mittens stopped mewing and began to purr. Then they all thanked Mr. Timmons and were starting home when Richard thought of something. Daddy, what about the reward? he asked. You had the paper say there was a reward for finding Mittens. That's all right said Mr. Timmons. And what was that reward going to be? I'd like to know. <clears throat> I think it ought to be a thousand dollars, said Richard, tucking mittens under his sweater to keep him warm. I'm afraid I can't afford quite that much, laughed his father. What do you think, Mr. Timmons? I'll tell you what, Richard, said Mr. Timmons. Supposing you get your mother to ask me to dinner sometime when you are having fried chicken. That would be my idea of a reward. So they invited Mr. Timmons over for the, ver for the very next Sunday, and after that they weren't home. Mittens was so happy to be home again and to have all of the warm milk he could hold that he purred violently for a long time without stopping. And Richard sat on the floor in front of the fire and petted him, and said over and over, Oh, Mother, I'm so glad we found Mittens. Aren't you glad, Mother? Of course I'm glad, Richard, said his mother, and so is Daddy. We're all glad, but it is time now for you and Mittens to get to bed. So Richard put Mittens in his little box and covered him with a piece of blanket, then hopped into his own bed and fell asleep thinking happily, tomorrow I'll play with Mittens, and the day after that, and the day after that, and the day after that, and the day after. The end. I hope everyone enjoyed that story, and now Miss Gamero has some questions for everyone to answer. Hi, hope you're having a great day today. Mittens, question number one. Why did Richard want a kitten? Question number two. What did Richard see when he went to the market with his mom? Number three. How did Mittens get his name? And number four. Where did Mittens go and who found him?
Bye for now.